get it started. We're at 602. I'd like to, we've got a quorum and let's get rolling. Um, so I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, it's really easy to do roll call for today because I can look at your names. I've got uh, Nicole, who's just our best buddy ever. Um, I've got Laurel Alterman, Pamela um, Bachelor, right? Yep. Jen Jen Jennifer Miller, the one and the only Angela Brill, Holly, the great Holly Brandish Lane, Peter Alexander, Aaron, who is diligently writing these names down. Thank you. Um, Noah, who doesn't look like um, an art piece anymore. Um, Trisha, um, we're really glad you're here. You're kind of a newbie, and we're so glad that you're here. Andrea, she's an oldie. Is that how we say it? But not ageism at all. But thank you for being here. Um, Eileen, um, thank you for coming back. Randy is here. Uh, Daniela is here. Susan is here. Kim is here. And Pamela is here. Does that sound good? Were you all OK? All right. Excellent. So we do. Um, I'm seeing some things here. Um, we wanted to see if there was public invited to be heard. No. No public invited to be heard. OK. Um, so now we need to have an additions or corrections to the January 21st minutes. And we need to see if there are any additions or subtractions and then do an approval. I know there's one typo at the bottom of page two. It says Peter motions for art of the move. I'd love to see art of the move, but I think that's what we mean is art on the move. Okay, great. Thank you very I'll much, other, Peter. Other than that, I don't. I didn't. I didn't see anything else. I don't see Cynthia here. So, anybody yeah. else? I think there was one. Oh, Sorry. go ahead. No, there no, was just first. one other correction that I saw. There was um, the word working. And it was missing a G at the end, and it was toward the end of the document. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Holly. It's probably just a transcription of how people say, you know, working. Working. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other? Any other additions? I think Angela, did you have one? No, but Cindy sent me a note and said that they looked very good. So we all need to give Aaron a big round of applause because this is not a fun job, but it is a rewarding job. We reward you with applause and dog snorts from the back of me. I apologize. Great. So then we need a motion to approve the minutes from January 21st. I motion. Okay. So that motion, I should say, addendum with the corrections, correct? Correct. Okay. Second. All in favor? All opposed? All right, the minutes for January 21st are solidified and good to go. Um, I, I second the motion, just you can put that in. <laughs> yeah, we had two seconds. We had Peter and Andrea, so great. Thank you so much. Wonderful. I'm glad you're all on top of it. <laughs> I have a quick question. A procedural question, which seems to me we should do before we get too far into the into the agenda. Sure, Peter. I noticed, I noticed in the um, instructions for uh, online meetings, it says that you're supposed to have an actual roll call for every vote. Are we all right on that, Angela? Um, I, gu I guess we should do non-attendance, right, Angela? I call. I did roll call as far as everybody that's here. Um, would but you on like vote, on each vote? It says it should be by roll call. I mean, I imagine that the city attorney who wrote this is thinking about city council who has five people. And if we go through every motion and ask each individual person of 15, what their vote is rather than a hand, it's going to make this process more laborious. That said it is in that policy. So I defer to you on your decision if you trust that the votes that we are doing by putting a hand visibly in front of the camera, this is being recorded. And if there was ever something that was contested, one could go back and view the 
documentation on YouTube that will exist until the end of time. It's up to you. So I, I would suggest that um, the, the chair should look, as you can see all the people and say, visually it appears to me to be unanimous and that would be good enough as long as that's in the record then you show that you have well and as angela mentioned at the beginning of the meeting we are at quorum and uh we are uh, i'm happy to do whatever you all want me to do um it hasn't been problematic in the last six years i've been here but that's a really great point that you raised peter i'm glad you have reviewed all the rules that's wonderful <laughs> Well, because we're we are being required uh, to accept and adopt this policy in this meeting, so it is it's oh, a okay. timely question. Well, how about we go henceforward and we'll make sure that we do that. Would that be okay with everybody? We start from this point on. We can vote on it. This point on, we'll make sure that I do a roll call on every vote. No, uh -uh. no, I don't think you need to do no. a roll call. If, if you not, can visually see that everyone what you want to do. If you can visually see that everyone's got their hands up, say that. So that's in the record that you have looked at the pictures and everyone got their hand up. And that being said, those who don't have their cameras on, um, I would ask that when we vote, you make sure you put turn your cameras on just for our votes. What do you think, folks? Yeah, that'd that, be good. Tough. And also you can, you know, with ro when we do vote, most everybody always raises their hand, but once in a great while we do have one person or two that doesn't, then you can write down maybe those with that one or two persons that dissented. And then it's the same thing. Everybody else, and we know who is here, voted for it. So Excellent, Andrea. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, we'll just make sure to note any abstentions and we'll make sure to call for them. Okay. All right. Is it that's yeah that, that sounds good good point Peter thank you Peter you're welcome so um Angela or anyone else um here do we have any additions to, to today's to today's agenda okay excellent so um strategic planning um Holly Amy and our friend Angela have been working on this. So I'm going to let Holly start and then we can kibitz in if that's okay. That sounds good. So I will just start by saying that the three of us have been doing quite a bit of behind the scenes work to determine the most effective way to not only create a strategic plan within art in public places, but we're also exploring other avenues about how we might be able to pull other creative art bodies in Longmont into our planning process. And so we're really very thoughtful in how we process through um, even a plan about how we're going to go forward with strategic planning. And I'll start by saying that over the last two weeks, we have looked at many of the other plans that are within our area. You know, we looked at, um, well, which ones did you look at, Amy? I'm sorry. I looked at Economic uh, 2.0, which is about 42 pages. Um, yeah. And my goal was to look through everything that mentioned cultural diversity, quality of life, um, things that might be um, connected to art in some way. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday we met and um, Holly did a really, you did uh, Vision Longmont, correct? And Vision Longmont, correct, yes. And we looked together and um, I'm not at all explaining disappointment, but we did have some things that we would love to see more mentioned about the the arts and culture in both of the plans. Um, this was written before COVID and before 2021, so we took that into consideration. Um, so there's some good stuff. They would they have great ideas, and we would like to enforce that. Um, we would just like to see some more. It just doesn't seem to me, and maybe I'm just being, and y'all stop me, Angela and Holly. We need to dig deeper. Um, we need to be looking a little more at some sources. So Holly, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. And and the reason we're looking at all of these sources for what our community considers to be culturally and um, creative is because 
we need to be able to consider our plan when we're looking at everybody else's plan and ensure we're all working kind of in the same direction. So um, our next step will be to try to put together a proposal to see our exact steps going forward. And I'm gonna turn it over to Angela because she may wanna share some additional information, but that's where I am. The last time arts and entertainment was really assessed in a deep dive in within our community when it comes to focus groups and surveys and set, et cetera, uh, was, was uh, 2010, 2011. And there were other entities that existed at that time. And um, I think that uh, with between a number of stakeholders in uh, who are addressing culture in Longmont, particularly LDDA and the creative district and ourselves, we need to be certain that the way that culture and the arts and other creative community is being supported is holding up some of these other plans. So I looked at and went through 140 pages of the sustainability plan, it's called Thrive, it's actually in 2.0. Uh, and so we're just trying to find ways that other cultural, or I'm sorry, rather other city bodies who have done uh, plans that are driving the work that they do when they put and culture, we're gonna do this and culture, like what does that mean? And we're asking them because they've done their amount of work and getting all sorts of data uh, to, to support them. And so by collecting the various bits and pieces of how and culture has been included, uh, that'll help uh, drive the work that we do, which ultimately will hold up Envision Longmont as, as the larger city plan. So, um, Certainly the museum as a partner and stakeholder, absolutely the creative district and LDDA. And I know that there are a number of other large organizations who will certainly be a part of this. So um, again, the, the goal right now is just to make sure that we know we could articulate what we're doing, what the goals are before we start inviting people to come to the table to support us. So I um, think we're getting there. We're, we've been meeting weekly. Um, yeah. So questions? Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, so are you envisioning that people representing LDDA and Envision Longmont, for example, would actually participate in our strategic planning meeting? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I, I think it's a great idea, first of all, because I, we have always collaborated and worked with LDDA and sometimes there's been friction or miscommunication, and I think working with them would be great, but I don't understand quite how they would be involved in our own particular strategic planning. Would they be at the meetings that we hold, or what, what are you envisioning? I'll let you question. No, go ahead. I'll, I'll let Angela, so just from um, a commissioner standpoint, and then Angela can tell you the details. We thought about this a lot because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, we don't want to be on the hamster spin and be like, oh, they already did this or somebody already did this. So we think it would be great. And correct me if I'm wrong, that we kind of meet initially and we find out what everybody's doing and we find out what the entire community is doing and what we can focus on within our little sections. I think that's a great point, but we, I'm all about like trying to keep things. Why, why would we do a study if so-and-so is doing a study? Why would, um, and Angela and I talked today and actually Holly yesterday about there's so much research that still needs to be done. And um, we can all of the cultural groups in Longmont can benefit from that. So we should do that together initially. That also being said is I don't want to be sitting here in seven months and we don't have anything done. So I think that's something that we need to look at. Um, Andrea, you, I know that there have been advent or little never mind, I didn't say it. There have been situations where it was a little challenging to work with other groups, but I think we have to right now. We are in an entire different environment than we were a year and a half ago. So you're suggesting then, it sounds to me like we would do, it's really us doing the investigation, like someone from AIPP would go and 
go to an LDDA meeting or, a, uh, and we have worked with um, Envision Longmont, you know, where we all get together um, and walk around. So that's what you, we first go and do our homework, investigate, and then we come back as a group. Is that what I, I agree. And I want to tell you that Angela has already done a lot of our homework for us. Okay. She has been involved in meetings. Um, I'm sure there's more to do. But um, Angela has really worked hard to partner with these folks um, in leadership positions because that's part of her job. And um, so I'm sure she could speak to that uh, better than I, Ms. Angela, correct? Well, um, and I don't know, Holly, you might have something to add to and Kim as well. But I think that really um, because creative culture in Longmont hasn't been directly like focus groups and going out into the creative community and saying, what is it that you need? How do you need to be served? Mm -hmm. um, and so um, instead of just art and public places doing it ourselves, while the creative district intends to try and get to the meat of that same question and, you know, inevitably other organizations, the symphony I can think of, uh, firehouse, there's all sorts of of uh, creative bodies, creative industries within Longmont that are asking all of these same questions. So rather than just doing our job for ourselves, for art and public places, we have an opportunity to really be the champion for kind of a larger cultural assessment. Uh, and so by partnering with other organizations and getting a plan of how we're going to do that, and how we bring people around the table to do it together. Uh, I think that, that that's really the intention and the goal. So uh, we have been, so Creative District and I have been talking to some of the resources that they have through the Creative District, which is Colorado Creative Industries with the state and saying, you know, can you give us advice? Can you give us some frameworks we can look at to see if we want to do an assessment ourselves, if it needs to be facilitated? So I have a meeting next week uh, to sit down with some people who have addressed facilitation of, of cultural plans and cultural uh, lenses. And we have an opportunity to start looking at creative culture through the lens of inclusion, of equity, of diversity, all of these things that we've been talking about as our priorities and how is it that we can bring that into the fold, not just within art and public places, but within cultural enterprises throughout the city. So um, I think we're just scratching the surface. What do you think, Holly? Is that a fair enough statement? I agree. I think we're really still in the assessment phase of determining how we're going to go forward. And I'll say personally that I envision when we do come down to making um, making progress and deciding what direction we're going. In my mind, it would be best to include the majority of the people that are right here on the commission who want to participate. Because the more knowledge we have that can bring forth ideas, the, the better off we'll all be. Um, and, and that may only be my vision, and I apologize for just shooting it out there, but I think that's what we'd like to to see in the long run. I agree. I think from everyone. The more participation we can have. And I don't, as I'm leaving in um, May or June, whatever I have to, when, um, I don't want to pass the buck, but this should be our focus for a little while, folks, I think, um, because this can really um, historically um, affect Longmont. I mean, we're talking about things that um, have mattered to all of us. And some of, like Noah and I have talked about this. This could really, really affect the way Longmont is viewed in the future. And it's not like a five minute discussion. So I think this is something that we should focus on. Um, and I'm not just saying inclusivity and diversity. I understand that. But like I just mentioned, and I won't go on a high horse, but 26% of our population in Longmont is Latino and or Latinx, whichever you prefer. And we don't have that represented in our area, in this area. And I think it's our jobs as commissioners and as volunteers and servants of our community to start reaching out and looking at that. 
So, I mean, Thank you for saying that, I think that's very important. I, I'm finding a way to have in, inclusion of, of, of people who have not been represented. And in my experience, I just a little sidelight here. My experience with musical organizations for which this is a, a huge issue is that saying diversity is not enough. Inclusion, inclusion is the word that, that needs to be used. This is something that we are going to be, people are going to look at AAIP in 50 years and be like, wow, this is when they first started doing this. And this is when they first first started doing this. I'm not saying that what we haven't done is important. It's awesome. But we are, 25% of our community needs to be involved in our decisions here. And um, the reason I discovered this, I mean, if you go look at economic, um, what what my friend Angela told me to go look at, I mean, they do a complete demographic breakdown of our town and what's going on. And it's important that um, they have that impact. And I don't truthfully feel like they have had the power or felt like they could. So it, it is our jobs as commissioners to feel like to, to empower them and say, come on, we want to hear your opinion. All right. I'll stop now. I agree. I like the whole okay. um, concept of the project. It sounds like a little bit of more work uh, externally and internally for each of us, but I think it'll do, super be worth it. Yeah, it will. It will be work and we're going to get there. And, and the goal is that when we bring the work to you, that it's very clear of what it is that we're all doing, um, how, how each of our participation and impact will will add to to this larger plan so um so stay tuned but yeah we've been working really we've been working really hard so it's it's gonna it's gonna be totally worth it and this will lead also to those code changes that we've been talking about and really understanding how how those code changes can then directly impact the work that we're doing and what what they need to be because it's not just going to be one it'll be a series Right. While we're Great. Raising, while we're raising uh, thorny issues, I just want to throw out there that uh, we might want to be aware of the fact that all this public art that we um, select and erect and then take care of is all on um, lands that was historically the, the home of the uh, Cheyenne and the Arapaho people. Thank you, Peter. Oh, and the museum is working on a land acknowledgement and uh, for, for the city, which then will go in front of council. And the hope, uh, and uh, Kim is here, but correct me if I'm wrong, is the goal is that that that, that is read at every um, city council meeting. And then hopefully for dedication for all art and public places pieces uh, as well. In addition, that Northern Arapaho sister cities uh, connection that is happening and coming about this year uh, should be coming to art and public places for a, a project as well. So you can anticipate seeing that too. That's yeah, right. spectacular. I'll, Thank you. Thank you, I, Peter. I'll just clarify um, our advisory committee for the museum met last night um, where we discussed the land acknowledgement. And we've been working with a, a Cheyenne and Arapaho consultant um, who's done some fantastic research for us. And so um, the direction that I have received is that that's really the best avenue for um, this to become um, something that the council uh, is sort of uh, discusses. Um, and so we just last night talked about it at our meeting. So it may be a while before it gets in front of city council for a bigger discussion, um, but, but the wheels are moving. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Uh, before we put this to, I don't want to, it's never going to be to bed. This is going to be something that's going to come up for many, many years, long before all of us will all be gone. Um, hopefully our kids and grandkids will be working on these issues. Anything else that would you like to bring up? Because I know it's sensitive and this is a good space. Let's talk about it if you need to. Excellent. Are you sure? All right. Then I'm going to move on to uh, more comfortable things and we're going to go to um, art or public art 
project updates. My friend Angela. Susan, do you want to give an update about Wortman Park and Sister Cities meeting? On the spot, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. There you are. Hi. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I have those notes somewhere, but we did have a, a long, um, not a long meeting. Uh, we just had a meeting to clarify um, mostly dates as to what was um, happening. And uh, we got a little um, sideline, not sideline. We, we just, some of the dates got extended more than what we had anticipated. And um, we let Sister City organization know about that. Um, we created more of a um, current timeline and um, it wasn't, it, 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 what it boiled down to is it's not um, Parks and Rec's problem. I mean, it's not, the finger pointing can't go to them. Finger pointing can't go to us. Finger pointing can't go to anyone except for COVID. Just because of that and the uh, original timelines weren't going to be met. Um, but I think it was clear to them and I think they came out of the meeting feeling um, copacetic. And do you wanna add anything else? Am I missing any part of that? We, we did get a date down for call for artists and I don't have that paper in front of me, but. Um, That's all right. So it's back, it's back with, with Steve for review and I anticipate getting it any minute. Um, and then it'll go to, to Cindy and Susan uh, and to sister cities to basically vet the, the language. Uh, one thing that did come out of it was the meeting that was very apparent was that our selection panel application needs uh, revisited and certainly not only because chances are uh, good chances are that the selection of this art piece will be done in the virtual format so that'll be new for everyone but also not so new because we're all pretty used to this this now um, so if anybody is interested in being a copy editor I would very much invite uh, anyone to give me a hand on on giving a look see over that that application, but the call for artists should be going out very soon. We'll leave it up for a little over 30 days um, and then go through the process. And there was some discussion about um, boundaries, borders of where um, the call for artists would go out towards. And I think we came to a consensus of that it would be um, mostly within color that would be within Colorado and extending a little bit into New Mexico, um, Arizona, Utah, just in the very corners, um, because we didn't want to add costs to things like transportation. And we also wanted availability to the of the artists um, for future events that would come up surrounding the dedications or different things that sister cities would want to involve the artist with. So we kind of um, consolidated that area of thought. Um, they had, they were thinking of going far flung and um, I think we reined it in with good understanding of why. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I, um, I, I, I just think that they weren't aware of all the fabulous artists that we have right in our state. And um, part of my um, discussion was that I wanted to try and keep the funds that we have in Longmont going to funds of artists in Longmont during this time that's been really, really difficult. Um, for artists so that was part of my argument was I don't know if I made that clear to but that was part of what I was trying to push forward add 
do it or delete, Angela. <laughs> no, I think that that's about right. Erin, do you have your hand up? The digital hand, the blue hand, the blue, yeah, go ahead. I do. I was just going to volunteer to be a copy editor for you. So send that my way. And then Laurel also had a comment. Or, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. So All right. Well, then you're done. You, <laughs> It'll come to me. No, you can come back. We'll come back to you, okay. Laurel, my friend, if you need it. So write it down next time. I have to do it all the time. I'm like, write down so I can remember what I, because I get so excited about all this stuff. So do we have any other feedback that we want to hit on that? Thank you so, so much for your hard work. That's amazing. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to... Um, uh, we got Western Min Park, uh, Sister City, RSVP, Art on the Move. So, Angela, uh, and Neighborhood Improvement, I'm going to let you pick from the top to the bottom. Well, let's start with, let's start with the Boston Bridge. So, I got to meet all sorts of new people who work for the city and ask them about RSVP and the bridge. And uh, it's actually really exciting and it's, it's moving forward. So they, uh, the senior engineers with the city who are working on this project are going back to the consultants and they are getting us an elevation drawing of the space, which will give us exactly the uh, square footage that we're talking about. So that'll be step number one is figuring out what that, what that space looks like. The second thing is then, if you'll recall, we were discussing potentially looking into a project that was more textural, bas relief, if you will. Um, and the great thing about doing something along that those lines is this project could really be accessible to a lot of different kinds of artists because such a design wouldn't have to come from the most uh, experienced artists, but somebody maybe who's starting to get their foot in the door when it comes to a public art project, etc. So, but we still need to understand what that cost looks like and what that will be for square footage. So we're still a little bit in the investigation. I'm going to share my screen and you're going to be excited about seeing the opportunities of concrete form liners. Mm. So I can't see you all now. So if there are questions, you might have to just uh, let me know. But what I am hoping to get back uh, here in the next week or two is, again, that elevation, understanding the square footage. And then I have a couple of contacts to reach out and start looking into how much these repeated patterns of form liners will cost. The great thing is that they're reusable. So um, once you do them, uh, it, it's completely possible to reuse them over and over. Uh, it can be a singular image. It can be a repeated pattern, which is probably what we will be looking into. And then that repeated pattern can be something that is thematic. For example, we could say it is Longmont's 150th year. Uh, oh, this one's really great with like mountain forms, but with oh, yeah. feet, there's bas relief. Uh, and, and this won't, necessarily affect the structure of the wall itself. Uh, the depth of the relief is a really important part. So the, this project could end up being something where an artist will have to go through the city process, will learn all about that, will get to work with engineers. And it doesn't, you know, um, since the artist themselves isn't necessarily creating this, uh, but it, it can be very conceptual. So it's a, it's, it's a good starting point for including something of a relief fashion. So that's the, uh, that's where we're headed. Now, maybe when we get the elevation back and we start looking at what the uh, opportunity is with that bridge, we start looking at where the road is, because I can explain it to you, but uh, this might not be the the direction that the commission wants to go. But at the very least, the next time 
that we get together and the RSVP task force and I will get together before our next board meeting. Um, but we'll have some har harder cost related to it, but should be a very impactful area. I think Alan had told me initially he thought it was some 90 feet long by potentially 10 feet high. Uh, it's, it's a large space, uh, very visible from Boston and also from left hand, um, the patio is looking, it's not directionally exactly south or exactly west, it's kind of at an angle. So um, yeah, so that's that's the update, but I've, I've met with the, the upper ups in the departments and I'm on their radar. So it's good, they're doing work for us now. Any questions or comments? Yeah. Randy? Maybe you have ESP and you know what I'm thinking about these, this, what you just showed us? Maybe not, okay, um, you do. <laughs> um, our wonderful Pratt Parkway bridge with all those little square or triangular, not triangular, puzzle pieces. Might be nice to do something like that there. Well, and that's the great thing about these forms. There's the cost isn't just for the form. There's the cost for the artist commission for the for the design, the cost for the form. And then the heavier cost is is incorporating using the forms in the construction project. That said, we're going to find efficiencies because uh, rather than creating an artwork and then installing it, it's an integrated piece. But right. um, absolutely. So once we have these forms, then they're ours. And there's a theme across Longmont. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, the idea that I was going to come up with before was uh, maybe pop up uh, kind of uh, experience for these artists that are out there and uh, something quick and informal. Um, having them just bring their artwork down and well, just a pop-up art show uh, a couple of times to showcase the artists, you know. They're, they're actually doing that at the LDDA office. They have a pop-up, I think, I don't know how long they last there, but yeah. A couple of months, they're doing it through the creative district. Okay. Thus, another reason to partner with LDDA. Uh-huh. Yeah, Peter. Um, with with those forms, and it can be reused, and presumably you have a, multiple designs that are used, that would be a great opportunity to incorporate some designs that reflect um, Latino heritage and Native American heritage in the larger picture. I can think of two other cities, you know, Las Vegas and... Um, uh, El Paso also has got these, uh, you know, these big textured walls, different Phoenix large. Does too. What? Phoenix does too, and they oh, use Phoenix a lot too. of Indian graphics on, on their, um, their walls and under bridge. Native walls. American graphics? Yes. Yeah, very cool. Well, and it's one of those kinds of projects that could be very accessible to any kind of artist. So uh, a design that is in someone's mind, if they needed assistance in articulating that visually, it's something that could be uh, all sorts of artists could participate in submitting a design for this. And it, oh, an award wouldn't be required on their technical ability, but yet uh, just, just a good solid design. So um, again, it, we're going to figure out first how much square footage we have to deal with. It could be that this is a very expensive project and that you decide maybe not to go this way. I have a feeling that it's going to be in the ballpark of something that would make sense for a project of this size. I just don't know. So uh, the task force and I will get together and uh, we'll just do do some more research. But needless to say, you can expect to see at the very least an elevation and uh and square footage and i'll do you know all, all the research and what it would look 
look like if we did some mosaic project or a, a mural project or something like that and bring all sorts of numbers to you so everything's on the table. Yeah. Great. Okay, now I'm a little lost. Um, I think we're on Art on the Move. Yep, so that call for entry is ready to go out and the big bad question is when does the commission want to get together and do the selection process? Now, we did decide that we were gonna do them as two separate calls, but I still think we should do selection on the same date. Um, hate to say it, but this is gonna be the format folks. So we're just gonna love our cozy little homes for this and just keep all of our fingers crossed that in 2022, we get to get back together and do this yeah. selection the proper way, Yeah, but not this year. And that's okay. Cause it's going to be fun. I'll bring music and you'll bring refreshments. Okay. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is what it is. So needless to say, uh, end of April, beginning of May would be ideal. I'm thinking that potentially Thursday night is probably best because most of you have already allocated this Thursday night. So my first suggestion would be Thursday, April 29th. So our meeting would be the week before, which would be the 22nd. And then we would just meet a, a week later to do this. And the reason that um, I think that that will be, will be, well, that or we could postpone it till like the sixth. And that would give maybe another opportunity for anybody if they have questions. We're gonna go through the during process. Anybody who has questions with that doggone um, cafe during system, we will walk through the whole bit, kit and caboodle of it. So rest assured that. But does anybody have a feeling or thought about um, the best date? I would prefer the first week of May. I would go with the 6th as well. Thursday the 6th? Sure. Me too. Does that not work? Is there anyone that Thursday the 6th of May is just a, a really the worst day there could ever be ever? It might be that I can't attend that, but it it's tough for me because that's the end of the semester too. Okay. And I was going to advocate for the 29th um, just to get the ball rolling a little faster. Um, it's just a week before it, but knowing how these things take time and then there's always a glitch. Contracts for art on the move just tend to be trickier than other contracts, which I don't ex exactly know why. It might be that some of these artists mute, mute, mute. aren't used to um, city contracts. <sighs> 29th, does that not work for anybody? It's good it's for me. Bad? Good for me, too. Okay. So because Cindy, Francis, Marsha, I think that that's it. Um, I'll send out a doodle poll for the 29th or the 6th and you can just select. And if it works for both of you, you do two greens. Um, I think we'll stick with the six to eight. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Or does everybody just want to decide right here? I think giving other people an opportunity to weigh in is so we can have the most participation possible is my preference, but is that cool with everybody? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So I'll send out a doodle poll. And if I don't hear from you, I'll call you. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Hooray. Yay. That was easy. So now we are on to, um, uh, neighborhood improvement. Yep. Yep. Sorry. I lost my place. Yes, ma'am. No, that's fine. So if you'll recall, uh, the end of last year, I met with Wayne Tomac and he is with the community services division of, and we're a part of that too. 
but he and I have never worked together before until, until recently. And I'm not sure if you all are, are aware of your neighborhood improvement project grant, um, as well as the sustainable neighborhood solutions grants. So they're available to uh, certain groups or not certain groups, but all groups, uh, not just HOAs, but community groups that come together. And there are a number of requirements for these grants. This grant cycle or uh, rather grant program has been going on for nearly 20 years. It's really successful. And thus far, uh, there's been interest in including art in public places, but it did, never seemed like the, the right a uh, project came about. Some of you who have been on the commission for a while might recall that there was a project once of a decorative background for a tennis court or something along those lines, but it just didn't ever mesh and wasn't exactly the right project. So uh, Wayne, I'm kind of in the on a learning curve of figuring out what it is that he would like from the commission and how he would like us to participate. And I'm still kind of feeling him out of what is the most successful way that these projects can come and be presented to you so we're not spinning our wheels on a bunch of projects that really aren't going to come to fruition because the folks in the neighborhood have to contribute in some way. So whether that's participating by fundraising or contributing themselves to labor for seal cracking or painting or I don't even know what it could be. So we're still kind of feeling each other out. That said, uh, the application cycle is all boogered up because of COVID, but uh, he's made extensions and we will likely see one come our way next month. And I actually think that it's plausible, it's feasible. So I'm gonna share with you, I don't want you to get too excited, but I, I think they're going to be awarded these funds and they're going to be asking art and public places for funds. So, Without further ado, if I can figure this one out. Oh, shoot. Hold on. I have to switch my screens. I need a bigger boat, you know. Do, do you know what neighborhood? Tightly. Tightly neighborhood. Okay. They have a basketball court. There we go. They have a basketball court, which is, as, as I understand, is going to be re-asphalted, is that a word? Is going to be redone. <laughs> and you see that? Oh, resurfaced. Resurfaced is totally the, per, the, the grammatical, yes, that's correct. Can you see those? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. So this, I, I'm a little weary, but this is a company who has done ground murals in all sorts of states on the two coasts, but not anywhere in the middle. <laughs> oh. um, and they have this, this process by which they go about getting the artwork and uh, suggestions of uh, materials that actually <sighs> adhere. My concern, of course, is UV sealant and protection as all murals, um, as we consider, but they're really excited uh, of, of bringing this to the commission. Um, I don't know how much the application costs that they're looking to, to ask. Uh, I also don't know these exact materials that they're using. So uh, Timber Toste with the Parks Department and I will be reaching out to this company to make sure that the amount of monies that the Kitely neighborhood is looking to, uh, to ask for this project that we can actually make it come to fruition and not have it be, you know, two colors or one color. And then also uh, the neighborhood really has to to define how it is that they would like to arrive at a, at a design. Are they gonna open it up to local artists? Is it only going to be local? Do they have a kid in their neighborhood who's, it's their plan to make the, the design? There's a lot of questions that need answered, but 
but I still don't think that it's anything out of the realm of, of possibility or reality. It seems like this is a, is a, a project that when all the questions are answered the right way is absolutely could come to fruition. Uh, I think that it is likely something that will be able to be uh, accomplished with a reasonable budget. And I also think that if we, we go through the exercise of doing it, it could be something that isn't just in the Kitely neighborhood, but in fact, we start incorporating into neighborhoods and that any neighborhood who would like to have a really jazzy basketball court could go through this grant process and we would have it pretty well figured out that anybody could apply for something like this. So um, really this is more of just an FYI that this is gonna be coming your way uh, with more clarification, but I was really excited about it. It's nice to see the community coming together and that they have vested interest. They, have, they will be boots on the ground for making this come to fruition. Um, yeah, so. Angela, can that be used for tennis courts too? I don't see why not. Uh, uh, well, that would be cool. I mean, I would have to make sure that whatever the material is that is applied to the surface could be mm -hmm. applied to the surface of a tennis court. I'm, I don't play tennis, so I don't know if that is different than asphalt or concrete or, but timber would know. So I will yeah. make sure to ask that question. They're really interesting. I, yeah. I like them awesome. very much. Wow. Yeah, I love the idea and the designs and yeah. um, the fact that each neighborhood could kind of collaborate and build their own kind of mural or their own idea of, of what's perfect. That's awesome. Yeah, the colors are great. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, you'll be. Uh, so, as I understand, this neighborhood improvement project cycle uh, is is set to be awarded in the next month. And so then that's when, you know, the work begins. And because of their grant, it has to be accomplished within the fiscal year, which is great. So mm -hmm. that, you know, they can't say, oh yes, we're going to participate. Uh, and then it just doesn't shake out or whatever that looks like. Um, we will, right, Art in Public Places, if this does come about, I, I imagine even if we were to, to be painting and having painting days in the fall, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take, a, you know, volunteer coordination, making sure that we have the paintbrushes and stations uh, socially distant, that we are sanitizing things. It's, uh, but it's, it's not, un, it's, we can absolutely do it. We can absolutely pull this kind of thing off. Um, you know, having signups where families come together and they're participating with each other so they can be in close quarters with each other. Um, that kind of thing. So it really is a collaborative effort. And then of course, in the age of COVID, like it's, it will just be a little bit more, it'll just be tricky, but we did the Tony Ortega mural. We can totally do this. It's far greater space. So yeah, that's that one. All right. Awesome. So good. So good. So good. Um, so um, <laughs> Neighborhood, we are on to conservative maintenance. Maintenance and report feedback. Thank you everyone for who was able to go through and do your forms. I know that entering comments in that doggone hazard field is just, is just kind of the pits, but Eileen and I have a very good idea, very strategic way of asking very nicely to get an open comments field. So we're, we're working on it. Uh, but needless to say, thank you for filling out those forms. I'm just wondering now, after you have gone through the process, uh, you know, taking your notes and then uploading them, do you have any feedback of, of, again, other than the comment field, if it's, if it's answering the right questions, where there's something that you want added, is there anything that you think is missing? I was uh, just a little co uh, confused about uh, if there was a sealant or not on the um, object, because I don't know, I didn't know whether uh, I did like uh, Guardian of Golden Ponds and it's brass and or, or bronze. And I wasn't sure if that had a sealant on it. 
it had a lovely patina. <laughs> so, I did. so that was the only thing that kind of like threw me for a loop. I went, do you have a sealant? Do you, I mean, if it's paint, I can tell the paint, but so that was the only thing that kind of threw me for a loop. That is a perfect, actually a perfect example. If you didn't notice that that bronze's wax was starting to fail, then, mm -hmm. then it looks good. And so if, if it was a sealant um, that you could see and you, you thought, oh, there's, there's a difference between the patina and, and what should, you would say, oh, there's the sealant. But the fact that you couldn't see or tell um, actually means that the, the wax is holding up quite well. So not all of them are going to have sealants and, it, and it's not surprising. There's gonna be probably a lot of the questions that you're like, oh, that's really not applicable here. But, um, but if you were looking at a bronze where the wax was failing, you'd, you'd, you'd notice it. Yeah. And it was really interesting to go around and see all, all the things that I missed. So that was nice. I just want to say that I took a picture of one of mine and posted it and it was shared by Visit Longmont on Instagram. Good for you. I have connections there. <laughs> well, I had a little trouble, um, although this is really such a fine point, that the names in the drop down menu didn't really match what you gave me. And then I, and then, but I, of course, was able to figure it out mostly. But I, I don't know if Dora is not helping too much here. Um, I don't know if that would be useful to make those a little more consistent, whatever. No, that absolutely is the case. And Eileen will just make a note of that because I'm not sure which version of the master spreadsheet was used for the upload to ETS for that. So we'll just go through and, I mean, it's only 80 pieces, so okay. it, should be, it should jump out at us, but yes. Um, some pieces are labeled one thing in one place and something else somewhere else. And it's not that we just need to find there. Yeah. Well, we're on the subject of names. I mean, I'm sort of jumping ahead but under B, under conservation maintenance, I believe the name of the piece is Colorful Poetry in the Middle Pages with a P. Oh, really? Oh, well, that's good to know because I actually, you know, know some about the Middle Ages and I couldn't figure out what the connection was that. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I spent some time in a number of documents. Colorful Poetry in the Middle Ages was about, but no, it's pages. Yeah, it should, if it's Middle Ages, then it should have some reference to illuminated manuscripts, which, right. I didn't, anyway. There are no unicorns. <laughs> there are no unicorns. I looked. <laughs> well, I've had a heck of a time with the spreadsheet, I'm sorry to say. I'm uh, computer illiterate, so I, uh, I had a tough time. And that is totally okay. So if you would like the good thing for me on the, the form is that it's printable. So yeah. if you'd like me to print you off 20 copies and there you go, I'll come by and, and I'll pick it up downstairs at the desk. You got it. Uh, let's connect offline and we'll figure oh. out the time and date for that. That would be awesome. Great. Thank well, you. I'll say Laurel, you're not the only one I had. Um, I found the artwork assessment paperwork or digital paperwork, whatever, to be pretty cumbersome. I don't like the fact that I can only choose one additional issue. Like if there's graffiti and cracks and broken parts, I, I can't label all of them. <laughs> oh, Angelus. that is really good to know. So, and okay. then, yeah, I just, I found it very restrictive, like surface coating, uh, like, like it was said, yeah, paint is a surface coating, but is there something on top of that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I found it, um, to be a little cumbersome and, and kind of unhelpful. I would have much preferred just kind of an open spot where you can describe what's going on. Um, and then, but I, I know that that information doesn't trans well into a, translate well into a spreadsheet. So kind of got to do both. Well, and Eileen and I are trying to mimic the fields that are in the database. So the the overall, uh, a bigger goal is so then 
that the work that you're doing doesn't have to be manually changed by a human, but that in fact, then that spreadsheet just connects straight to the database and those fields are just populated. It just takes a human out of the, the, the middle. Um, but the fact that you can't select more than one and there's more than one issue actually um, isn't helpful. So that is excellent feedback. Thank you. No okay, problem. So we have work to do, but it's, be it's better. It's working better. Um, okay. Any other feedback? Oh, sorry. I'm just looking now at color for poetry. That's that's on agenda item number uh, color for poetry under maintenance. Do we need to address that specifically? Yeah. Did some of our commissioners go and visit the civic center to assess and take a peek at that? Yes, I did. Um, and uh, I think I wrote you a note about it, but um, actually it's better than I was expecting, but some, they are unevenly faded and sort of dusty. So I, I recommend replacing rather than trying to conserve. I would, I would recommend because these kinds of banners are really not designed to last forever. And I think we could update and do something interesting and new if we have the money. I mean, I think that's what I would recommend. I would recommend replacing. And so I did look at the CIP and the overall construction, or I'm sorry, the yep. overall project for the Civic Center was $4 million. And so of that $4 million, whatever the construction line item was, went into art and public places. I will determine exactly what that is. We don't have to use that as a one-to-one, -one, but it was a significant construction project. And seeing that uh, we are celebrating the 150th anniversary of, of Longmont, it would be apropos to do a project, a couple of projects um, at the Civic Center. Uh, I did speak to Chelsea. Chelsea has a last name, which I can't recall but she's the project facilities manager of um, Civic Center. And she said that they do intend to replace those skylights in the next couple of years, but it is not going to be happening this year. So that's not really impeding uh, a project that we would want to do if we remove those and commissioned a new work. Uh, just that in some amount of time, chances are they might have to take whatever it is down potentially or work around it so um okay any other discussion uh, anything I else just, i just agree um they they look a little faded and, and beat up and i think it's time for something new there yeah i do too would you like me to read you the deaccession policy or would you like me to forward it um, I think forwarding is great. We yeah, I'll take think. a copy. For forwarding, forward. yeah. It's it's not very long. I, I think it's just a paragraph, right? Why don't you read it? I lost it, but I'm gonna. Okay, why don't we? Uh, Actually, well, why don't you like come back? We can come back and then you can read it. Can we How's come that back sound? to that table yeah. it for just a minute and yeah, sounds good. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Um, new business. Yes, ma'am. I heard somebody. Yes, Susan. Um, going back to the um, banners in the, um, that's just what I'm going to call them. Um, so if they are going to put new skylights in there, I'm just wondering if they're going to be different sizes from what they are. Oh, it'll be exactly the same footprint. Okay, never mind. All good. He said replacement. Okay. Okay, anything else? And then Angela, I'll come back. Got a minute. Do you want to keep going? You guys want to talk about election or uh, 
electronic policy you want to go i think we we're on i think i thought we were on um new business st Vrain greenway do you mind if I, I pipe up real quick i'm sorry um sure to go back just a second but i wonder if they are going to replace those skylights if there if there might be an opportunity to get uv protection because whatever might go in that space is going to be susceptible to light damage. And so if we were able to um, get in on the front of that and be able to get some UV protection, it might expand the opportunities for art in public places. So when uh, I talk to Jeff Cedar and Chelsea next week, uh, I could just ask that when that day comes, um, that that could be a part of Art and Public Place's maintenance co contribution to that project. But it's not this, it's not happening now. Got it. Okay. Yep. Anything else? I. I had a couple of things. Are we on new business? Um, not yet. Okay. All right. Excuse me. Angela was still looking for um, one thing, and then we were just going to, we'll move on here in one moment. You Anything? Can, you can move on to new business. If you want to talk about that election, um, uh, just skip over Hover real quick and go to the electronic meeting thing. If you guys want to discuss that while I continue to look. Um, I have an agenda that does not have electronic stuff. It says electric participation. Under where? 9B. Uh, I have, oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yep. All right. So. And that wanna... should be electronic. Electronic participation, not okay. electric. Okay. I mean, we're all electric, right? <laughs> not me. I'm, I'm like not even battery operated. Um, <laughs> adoption of electric participation go ahead who do we need to honor in that field well i read the policy and aren't we just supposed to approve it yeah i mean we I can't really i are mean, expected to observe it I yeah that yeah thank my you understanding and so yeah. what they really need from us is an acknowledgement that, yes, we will observe it. Right? Yeah, we, need to, we need to adopt it as art and public places policy. Mm -hmm. So we probably need to vote on it. Correct, Angela? So we are sure. going to need to get a motion on that. Who would like to do that? So moved. Let's, we have to state the whole thing, Peter. I move that we um, adopt as official Art and Public Places Commission um, policy that we will observe the city's electronic participation policy. Excellent. And do we Perfect. have, thank Perfect. you, Laurel. Thank you. All of, um, now I'm scared about this. Um, all of the all who approve say, raise your hand so we can all see it. So I need those who are not, Pamela, you're not on camera. I need to see your hand. Yeah, I'm on. I don't have a camera on you, sweet pea. Um, she's yes, she is. She's, actually, she's, yeah. got, she's got two she's screens. Got, remember, I have two Oh, screens. yeah, yeah, you're two. Yeah. Okay, and Andrea, I could not see your hand. Uh, because I don't know what the electronic policy is. I just don't want to approve something I don't understand. I'm sorry, I must have missed the email saying, you know, with the policy. So. All right, so then we need to move this back to discussion. Um, anybody have discussed, can anybody help explain this, please? Well, it was, it was attached with the um, agenda and the minutes. All three were together in huh. one document when I got it. Well, right. I'm yeah. sure it's there. So, was it on the bottom? Maybe I just didn't. Yep. It was, it, was after, it was after the agenda and the minutes. It was on okay. The, I have, I apologize. That's my bad. So I can I can chime in just a little bit. Um, Thank you. Essentially, Kim. yeah. Essentially, this is just a policy that recognizes what we have already been doing. Um, the the uh, city manager's office and the um, county clerk. I mean, I'm sorry. The city clerk have um, realized that in order for us to be able to operate with the 
these Zoom meetings that we really need to be able to adopt this policy. And so it doesn't do much beyond recognizing what we've already been doing for a long time. Okay. Well, one part of it I noticed was that uh, beyond COVID, when, when we were unable to get together in person at all, and we do this by a multiple Zoom meeting, if someone for some reason is unable to attend a meeting, they could potentially participate electronically as long as certain conditions are met, that everyone can see them, that there's, uh, you know, they're able to participate in the discussion. If I read it correctly, then that's also part of it. Do, is there is there any, like, uh, is it, you know how I think um, in the old days we could only miss two meetings a year. Is it the same that way? In that regard? Yeah. Is there, was that part of the policy about absences is my no. question? No. Okay. No. Okay. But presumably if, if you were, um, you know, housebound for some reason or other, you could use this as a way of participating and not missing a third meeting. Oh, that's great. Correct. Yeah, 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 that's right. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. I apologize. I didn't see that. No worries. Thanks, Skip. I, we get, we're, um, in the world of virtual reality, we get so many emails and so much stuff. It's hard to keep on top of everything, right, folks? All right. I know I can't keep track. I just say, uh-huh, a lot. Pamela, did you have a question or a concern? No, I'm fine. Thank you. I just saw that you lit up. When people light up, <laughs> I try and, I try and get people called on. Okay. Some of us just light up naturally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no comment. <laughs> okay. I so. think we just need to finish that vote. All right, so we, we had a motion and let's go backwards. So we had a moment for discussion. So Peter, can you repeat your moment, your motion again? I know it was complex no, and beautiful. I can't. I move that we accept as official art and public places commission um, policy that we will observe the city's electronic participation policy. Hey. Seconds, no. please. I second it. All right. Before we do that, any other discussion? All right. Um, please, if you're in favor, let us know with a hand. If you're not on camera, shout out an I. Excellent. So moved. Thank you very much. We are now on to our new business of St. Vrain Greenway. Hober updates. Okay, so uh, Marsha was unable to attend today, uh, but she and Joan Peck were having a conversation about the Greenway underpass at Hover and Third. Does anybody cruise along that way? Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, it is in pretty bad shape. And I reached out to Parks to ask about if it is on the docket for demo related to RSVP. And the answer is no. That's where the project stops. So it potentially could be a location for um, an underpass mural. That said, what we have learned from the Ninth and Alpine project is we really shouldn't be putting murals on walls that haven't been prepped um, and need a little bit more work. So I was wondering if mural committee would be agreeable to just go scope it out, uh, take a look at it. And then I'll also put you in touch with Mike before we go forward on anything to make sure again that we're going about this the right way. The hope was that we would have our mural policy really locked down by now, but um, I don't think that that should prevent us from, from at the very least taking a peek at it. So um, I don't have a picture, but even if I did, it's not a very good one. Sure. Uh, so mural committee, that's Amy and Noah. Um, does that sound it's like- Noah. Come on, Noah, you're in charge now. It's Noah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that there's an underpass there. I've not walked, uh, that corner so i've not seen it where is it again 
third third and hover it's it's right by uh, rogers grove right it's the one that goes to golden uh, pond oh, it goes yeah, to golden ponds so and so if you see it this is gonna sound weird the meat packing there's a, and box, pack. there's a boxes it says boxes moving boxes available and meat packing you right. go to the right hmm. and yeah, i haven't i haven't, haven't gone to the right and i've been here 50 years <laughs> But I've been under that overpass, underpass. And it's actually really beautiful, except for the storage unit <laughs> on the other side. But it's very rural and, and beautiful water. Noah, call that. me or text me, Noah, and let's go together. Lots yeah, Amy, I've been back. trying to get a hold of you for a little while, so I would like to do that. You get, you get real close to the water under there. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. That's really pretty. a little bit why I was surprised that it wasn't on the docket for when they when they work on the RSVP because the project right now currently ends at sunset and then anything west of that is another section of the project. Uh, but I, I talked to Steve and I said, is that pedestrian going to be changed? I said, any chance of it at all? And he said, no. The other piece that's really interesting about that location is uh, it of course is a corridor for rhythm, blah, 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 blah. rhythm on the river, rhythm on the river, but rhythm on the river for 2021 is canceled. So that does give us a really fair timeline to be able to research, investigate, look at it. If there was some work that would need to be done, uh, and then be able to accomplish something by, by rhythm on the river, 2022. So uh, kind of again the beginning of a research part project, but if if y'all are interested, it uh, Marsha brought was bringing it to our attention. So, guys, I'm on the mural committee too, and Randy. Good, Randy <laughs> and Noah, you guys can have a good time. I've already been there. I I know what it exactly what it looks like. Yeah, me too. Great. Well, Noah and I will go look, and then you guys can catch us up, and then we can meet together. How's that sound? Okay. Sounds great. Excellent. So we are now adoption of electric particip. Oh, we did that. We did, we did that. All right. Oh my gosh, we we're on administrator's report. Holy moly, we're just cooking along. I we're have cooking. a couple things that I think might go. Should I wait till comments? I you have should wait till commissioner comments. Okay. So we're, we're um, I'll start my administration report with uh, the deaccession policy that I have. Thank this you. is the adopted and correct one. Uh, so Art in Public Places Commission carefully evaluates each project site for installation of permanent artwork, working with various city staff representing many departments, thereby minimizing any need to relocate or deaccession artwork after it's been permanently install installed. On occasion, however, circumstances require the consideration of relocation or deaccession of a work of art from the city's permanent collection. Any reasonable request for relocation or deaccession will be carefully considered by the commission in accordance with this policy. The definition of deaccession is the removal of permanent artwork from the city's permanent collection. Uh, relocation, relocating permanent artwork to a different location than originally intended or than its current uh, or permanently intended site, or moving an artwork that was intended to be permanently located in a particular site to another site. Permanent artwork is any visual artwork uh, intended for display for one year or more, including works acquired by the city, displayed in open city-owned area, or on the exterior of a city-owned facility, inside city-owned facility in areas designated as public areas, or any non-city property if the work of art is installed or financed either wholly or in part with city funds or grants procured by the city. This is the important part. Reasons for relocation or deaccession. Reasons for relocating permanent artwork include but are not limited to. The artwork proves to be endangering the safety of the public in its current location. The use of the site has changed significantly since the installation of the artwork. Governmental improvements uh, requiring such relocation permanently or temporarily. Unanticipated deterioration of artwork at the current site due to, including not limited to, weather, materials, or an emergency. Um, Deaccession, the piece has undergone extens extensive maintenance 
or is deemed not cost effective to continue to restore it. The work is irreparable. The artwork endangers public safety structurally in its current location, uh, government improvements, or an emergency. Is that clear? Clear. I think that we need to read, Angela, that's too much for us to observe in a meeting. I will. I will send it to you, but the piece that's important is that the piece has undergone ex excessive maintenance or is deemed not cost effective to continue to restore it. That, that totally makes sense. Um, I don't have any problem with, I don't have any need to review it, but there are some folks here that might want to read that again. Yep. Um, it, it, sounds that would, I, it would not be me who would like to read that again, but the emergency thing makes sense. Peter. It sounds to me like we ha would have the um, authority to, to say this is no longer uh, viable where it is, cannot be repaired further. Um, but do we need some kind of um, input in making that judgment? Can do I we ask just a look quick at it and say that's, you know, we can't fix that anymore? Kim? Yeah, can I ask a quick question? Um, it seems to me that when Lauren worked with the conservator who assessed, um, oh, now I'm going to forget the piece, the, the ceramic piece um, that we had conserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that she also got a quote from that same conservator for this piece. Do you remember that, Angela? 2008 Paula Redding. And the cost just to rent the lift to get the single banner down, uh, the report came out that re dyeing the piece was, um, it was exorbitant, but uh, they, it was a min minimal assessment. I mean, I guess, you know, it's kind of like when you total your car, like, is the, conservation more than the cost of or the value of the piece and so we would need to try to understand what the value of the piece is at, on some level um, um also also that whole fading aspect can you even restore it to its original you know the way it looked because with the sun fading and the the fibers burning from the sun i just don't think it's even you can ever restore it to, to the way it once was. No, I mean, that's the thing about light damage is that it is cumulative over time. And so you can't restore it um, to, I mean, you can, re you could re dye it, which is kind of a different thing. That's, that's not exactly um, conservation. That's restoration. So there's kind of two different things going on there. But the other piece of that is that, any fiber arts under those conditions are going to have light damage, period. So it's, it's just going to get worse over time, too. So the piece was, was installed in 1994. It was originally commissioned in 1992. Um, I would say it's... So just for the record, I was 21. It's, it's certainly lived its life and more than the requirement of a, of a lifespan for, for a um, piece of artwork. So yes, so I, th I can certainly send this along to you and you can think about it for next month. Um, can, we, can we, yeah, let's put it on the agenda for a vote next month, if that's okay with everybody. Because um, that to me, I mean, maybe it's just a 726 when we've all been, I've been in nine Zoom meetings today. So um, maybe that's why I'm a little fried, but is anybody else, does anybody like ready to move on and just say, that's what it is? Or would we like to revisit this in um, March? I don't think we need to revisit it, do we? Don't we all well, agree? Let, can, I just want to point out that uh, I think according to the policy, there needs to be some assessment of value and um, repair costs. So maybe at the next meeting, we look at how much the piece was commissioned for and then the um, conservator's estimate of how much it would cost to repair it, at least to get a baseline of what it might, what, what those different values, how they compare to one another. Great. And do you think that somebody, should we have some research in advance so we can just bring it to the commission next month? 
I don't know that there needs to be research. I think that probably we have the data in files, which is that conservators estimate and the cost of the piece when it was originally commissioned. Okay, good. Um, Laurel and then Laurel and then Peter. It, it seems to me that's a waste of time because, because you have already stated that there's a deterioration in fabric. This thing has been up for 25 years and, and the cost of restoring it or whatever, uh, does it really matter? It's been up for 25 years. Isn't it time maybe for another piece? I think sometimes legally it's very important uh, to to have it down on paper. Uh, sometimes the artist can come back and make complaints about it. Uh, and so we have to have really good reasons. And Andrea would know. I think we need to, I'm sorry. Andrea. I think we need to. F Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, I was Kim. just going to say, I, I think that we need to follow the policy. And if I'm understanding the policy correctly, I, I think we need to make that judgment. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think it would be wise for everyone on the commission to have actually read the, 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 uh, the, the policy and have it clear in the record that that's what was done, that it was done in, in a fully appropriate manner. I can't, I'm I sorry I to keep button in, yeah. I get it. I don't Thank disagree you. with Laurel's assessment, but I, th I think that it's important for us to show all the legal steps on the way. And I also think it's really, really, really um, our due order to do so as a commission um, and something that we need to do. So I don't know if we technically should form a task force or uh, I'll ask Angela what she thinks we should do to review that and then get it passed through as fast as we can. What do you think, Angela? It's up to you. If you want to designate two people who I can send all of this information by, and I will also send it to the entire commission so you have an opportunity to read it, then the task force could make a recommendation to the commission at the next meeting as an informed body. Or, again, I'll just send all of Yeah, That would save so much time if we had two people, honestly. And I don't okay. want to be one of those two people. I'll be happy to be one of those people. Okay, Noah and Holly, anybody else? We could have more than two people. But then I can't send emails because it's not an open meeting. So really task force at two people allows me to be more efficient. All right. Sorry. Never mind. Y'all are out. Um, Noah and Holly have uh, been um, agreed to do this. So you will investigate this and then come back to us um, the third week in March and let us know what's going on. I'll send it to you tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you. Um, do we need to have a vote on that? I don't believe so from what I've read about our Rogers. Nope. Okay. Excellent. Good. I keep saying excellent. A different mode of operation. All right. Uh, Angel, when you send that email, could you give us um, all the information that you have on the piece and its commission and price and all that? Okay. Yep, I'll send you everything. And I know I'm not on that task force, but if you might need any assistance, I'm happy to help in any way like as a as a chair okay questions concerns on that item thank you andrea for bringing that forward as far as you know making sure that we vote um laurel i know we all want to get through things as fast as we can but sometimes we got to keep on rolling you know i get it i get it i've been very impressed with us all trying to really get back into the mode of um following procedures and that's a really cool thing all right from my understanding we are now unless angela has anything on her administrator's report um great commissioners oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're good we're good okay awesome commissioner's report comments well, I would say that please tune into Front Range Community College, who's got a, a student art show, has got a lot of art stuff going on. Um, when our We've been a little bit dormant in our community with art. Um, Google Front Range Community College art. That's my plug because they're doing some really good work. Okay, I have a couple um, things. Yeah, Jennifer. Um, 
I heard a rumor that a piece had been stolen or taken down somehow off of the main bridge, uh, the bridge on Main Street going right over to Ken Pratt. And so I just wanted to see what is the real story here on that. No, no? that's not true. Okay. Uh, there are an odd number of, of pieces. And as I understand, and that was before my time, Andrea could speak uh, probably to that exact moment. But when the work was commissioned, it was commissioned at a certain dollar amount for the bridge as it was designed at the time. When, I was there too. Yes. When CDOT came back and I think CDOT, there's two entities who have more power than mother nature and that's CDOT and the railroad. And oh. when CDOT came back and said, you know what, actually this bridge needs to be longer for the flood, water, whatever forces of nature, and we need to make this bridge longer. And then they added another pillar, which wasn't accounted for in the original call for artists. And so that one is not addressed. You got it, exactly. Okay, thank you. Okay, next item. Um, on the 150th, the sesquicentennial of Longmont, um, I'm wondering if there's a s list of the things happening. I know there was the there was some kind of celebration at the museum and so forth. But the main reason I'm asking about this is because there are three time capsules outside the Civic Center building that say right there on the plaque they're to be open this year. So I don't know. I want. I'm just wondering if there's any schedule for that. If you know about it, and if we should have fun going there or maybe they're going to postpone it because people can't gather very well. But anyway, there are three time capsules and on the plaque, it says they're going to be opened in 2021. Hey, Kim, do you know yeah, okay. three time um, capsules? <laughs> this is what I know. I don't know much, but this is what I know is that there is a committee that is citywide and it includes Eric from the museum and then um, uh, Marika who's in the communications department and several other people in the city. And um, that those time capsules have come up in conversation. I don't think that there is a specific plan for open those yet, but it is very high on their radar. So I suspect sure. that it will happen. Um, I just don't have any details. Okay. So I don't know if that's one of our responsibilities on this commission. So maybe Angela can check on it and just as a, a piece of information, she can let us know. But I don't right. think it's more of a piece of information. But on the other hand, it might be kind of an interesting thing to be represented. At. So we do have a historical society group that might be really cool to get find out if they're involved as well. I know we have a commission that's dedicated to that. So okay. that's all. But yeah, I don't know that Art and Public Places has any authority or no. reason to open. I would, capsule. if there's some art in there, that'd be <laughs> awesome. Touché. Not that Touché. we would be the opening, but maybe just, I don't know. Anyway, I thought it would be interesting. I mean, because the, the main reason it made me think of Art and Public Places is because there's this big kind of rock boulder thing, which is over the site, which is almost an art piece in itself with that plaque mm -hmm. on it. Oh, that's cool. Then maybe that would be something for us to be able to look at preservation, 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 persevering. That's what we've all been doing in the last year, persevering. Yeah. So preservation, maybe that's something I want to think about. What do you think, Angela? Well, I have that meeting with uh, Jeff Cedar and, and Chelsea about the Civic Center already scheduled. So at the same time that I'm talking about skylights and colorful po poetry of the middle pages, and potentially that uh, plaza area that I don't know if y'all are aware of that, that corner of the southwest corner that is just begging for color or something. Yeah. Uh, just there, there's a lot of opportunity there, certainly with 150 years. And, uh, and because there's CIP funds that are coming from Civic Center, it seems appropriate that we could launch a project this year at the Civic Center and it could be associated with any variety of these things. So uh, I will make certain to ask that question at the same time. And if you find any of my, my family members in there, yeah, because we've been here a long time, just put them away. I don't need to hear from them. 
And if you have not watched the video of the, I can't say the word, sesquicentennial. and centennials. I don't know. Uh, the, the museum program wherein Eric did unveil that one, the one time capsule, it actually was a really lovely program. So you can go back and see it on the, through the Facebook page. I'll yeah, go look I, at that. It had a real uh, vaudeville vibe. I liked it a lot. Longmont was quite the, the place, y'all. It was quite the place. All right. So from what I can see, any other commissioner comments? I just have one real quick. Um, I work for Sticker Giant, which is a local startup company here in Longmont. And for those of you that are creatives, no creatives, please encourage anyone to um, enter. We are having a sticker design contest right now. There is no monetary award. However, if you if your design is chosen, um, you'll get 250 free stickers, which is kind of good for local artists. You can pass them out. Hey, I designed this. And those stickers will be shipped out for the month of March um, with all of our orders. And our orders go worldwide, um, mostly nationwide. But yeah, they're going all over the world. Hey, That's Aaron, can, can you send us like an email on that? Because yeah, yeah, is there a yes. link or a website yeah because I know like even like art students um, yeah, would son, love to be involved in that. My a sticker. Yeah. So if you would send a, a link and if you don't, if you want to send it to me or and to Angela, she'll, we'll get it out to everybody. That's flipping awesome. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. That's the kind of stuff we like to hear. Anybody else have great news like that? I have uh, one thing that I know that I forgot. So just. <laughs> All right. Go I ahead. I forgot to eat dinner. <laughs> I know I couldn't <laughs> wait. I had to eat. I, ha I forgot to add Eileen's database update on, oh, look at her. Oh, come on, Eileen, just quick. Uh, if everyone has a few minutes, um, I am updating the databases. That's mostly what I've been working on. Um, and I know that there's been lots of chat about the website, the AIPP city pages. Um, and I would like everyone to know that I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, there's one chart in particular that is a list of the permanent collection that has only about 60 items on it. And in fact, you guys have about 85 art pieces that you're looking, keeping track of and taking care of. So um, I am working to make that a little bit more dynamic and a more useful list uh, that is both Googleable by the public and uh, more interesting than a chart. So we're, we're working on it. Uh, yeah, if anybody has any um, comments about the artwork archive that, which is a separate website and a separate database that exists of almost all 85 um, pieces, uh, please let me know. Maybe email Angela. She can forward it to me if you don't have my email address. If anybody's really attached to that database or enjoys using it or researching or updating it or anything like that, I'm um, struggling at the moment figuring out how best to use it, I guess is um, the point. It's a uh, designed to be public facing, but I'm not sure how um, useful it is. So thank that's mostly you. what I'm working on. No, thank you. And please, all of you, be in, in touch with Eileen if you want more specific information. We didn't mean to crowd you end to end. And all of us are like, I can see us kind of going, ooh, so we're trying. You're doing such a great job and we are so glad to have you on board and we are so thankful for you. So um, your contribution is amazing to us and believe me, we love it and we appreciate you and we want more. And why don't you just stay here and do this forever? <laughs> okay, awesome. Let's see here. I think we are really close. Is there any other commissioner reports? I thought I saw a few hands pop up. Aline, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Anybody else? Okay, because this is it. Forever hold your peace. Um, I want to welcome the new people who have been here. Um, 
we're ending early tonight, which doesn't always happen. Um, so I'm going to give you like 20 more seconds to think of things that might come up. Yeah, don't get used to these early endings. <laughs> I remember the days we were done at 648. So those were the old days, but now we have a lot more going on. Um, again, if you have questions, concerns, we've talked about a lot of stuff tonight. Um, between, yes, Pamela? No, I'm sorry. No, I just see your light go on. So I'm trying to like be attentive to that. When, when I'm in a Zoom class, when a light goes on, I'm like, okay, student, what would you have? No. So that's good. Any other concerns, questions, anything you want to bring up? So again, we've talked about a lot of things. The strategic planning stuff. Oh, sorry. All right. Any other questions or concerns? Move adjournment. That wasn't me this time. It was the dogs. Sorry. I move to adjourn all seconds. Second. All in favor? So adjourned at 643. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Wonderful Thank meeting. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Amy. Thank you.